In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to generate a random string of characters in C. The algorithm is pretty simple and I'm sure going to get it by the end of this video. So to start off, we're going to think about where we store that string. So I'm going to first here declare a array str of 16 characters. Really what I want to generate is just 15 characters, but we need one extra character for the null terminator. Okay. Now to start off, we have to understand that uh, any character in C is actually a number and that number is uh, represented in the ASCII table. So here I have the ASCII table and if you take a look at uh, the characters that we want to generate, let's say we want to generate a string of random characters and those characters are, are just lowercase uh, English alphabet characters, okay? That's all we're going to allow the, our string to have. And uh, if we take a look at the let's say lowercase a, we're going to say that we're going to see that the ASCII number for it is 97. So if we actually say str of zero equals 97, so 97, and uh, I'm going to also null terminate my string and I'm going to print it using printf percent s I have two backslash ends and uh, str. If we try to launch this, you'll notice that I get A on the screen. Okay, that's great. So we can just generate some random numbers to get the characters uh, that we want. Okay, so what characters, what then, what numbers do we need to generate? Well, we need to generate any number between 97 and 122. So of course, if I paste in here 122, I'm gonna get the letter Z, which is the last in our set. Perfect. Now, to generate uh, a random number inside an interval of numbers, well, we have already a video on that, that you can check up top. Um, and it's actually very simple. First, we're going to use the run function. So to do that, we're gonna call srand of time of null first, all right? And uh, we, we basically start off by calling the run function and we use the modulo operator to restrict the number of, well, possibilities that we get to uh, a subset of that, to the number of letters that we can get. And what's the number of letters in the English alphabet? I actually don't remember, but what we can do is simply subtract the last element and the first element of the set. So we can say 122 minus 97, and we're gonna have to add one to this, so it's both inclusive. And this is only gonna give us uh, numbers between zero and 25. And we want to add that 97 back so that we get numbers between 97 and 122. Okay, and now if we try to launch this, you will notice that I get um, a different letter every single time. And here I get a warning saying that time is not defined. We have to actually include time.h so that this is properly defined. Now if we launch this, everything should be fine and dandy. And now all we have to do is surround this uh, line of code in a for loop. So we can say here for int i equals zero, i less than, uh, in this case, we're gonna say 15 because we want to leave the last character to be the null terminator and i plus plus. And let's do that. I'm gonna say here str of i and I'm gonna generate a random character for each character in the string. And now the last one is not no longer str of one, it's gonna be str of, well, not 16, but 15. This is our last index, and that's gonna be the null terminator. Now, if we launch this, we should get a different uh, string, basically every single time, as you can see here. All right, now let's say that you, for some reason, forgot the ASCII table. You forgot exactly what, uh, what the character A is, inside the ASCII table and what the character Z is inside the ASCII table. Um, there's actually a so solution to that because in the C language, everything is treated as a number. Pointers are, are a number, um, strings are a number, and even characters are a number. So instead of 122 here, we could just specify the character Z. And C is going to look at this and it's going to simply replace it with the value with the ASCII value of uh, that character, which is 122. As you can see, hovering over it even gives me that, uh, the code exactly. And 97 in our case is the character A, so we can just do that. And voila, we don't actually need to 
uh, use the ASCII table, we can just let C take care of things. Okay, and as a last improvement to this, uh, to this algorithm would be to make it a function because sometimes you need to re reuse this code many times over. So let's create a simple function here. We're going to say void uh, rand underscore string. I'm going to say um, I need a char pointer for our string and a number. And this, this, this num is going to represent the number of characters we want to generate, not the actual length of the string. All right, and we're just going to simply move, well, these lines from here to here. And since this pointer has the same name as our array, then it's perfect. We, didn't, we don't need to change much, just this 15, we want to change it to be num characters. All right, and now we can simply call this inside our main function. We can say rand underscore string of str, and then we can say here 15. We want 15 characters to generate. Perfect. And if we launch this, you will notice that uh, this works fine. Now, an important aspect to remember is that uh, this strand here is required to be at the start of the main function. If we move it inside the function itself, so if we move it here instead, things are gonna look all right, but if you actually call this function multiple times a second, so let's try calling it a second time here, if I launch this, you will notice that we get the same exact strings. Why is that? Well, it is because this uh, strand takes in a uh, a value, right, as as a seed for the random numbers that it is going to generate. If you pass in, for example, a strand of zero every single time, every time you call rand for the first time in that string of um, in that string of random numbers, it's going to result in the same uh, number. In, in our case, we're calling time of null so that it represents the number of seconds since the Unix epoch time has elapsed, but if it's the exact same second, so if this rand string is called inside the same second, then we're going to pass to srand the same exact seed, the same exact number. And because of that, uh, whenever we call rand, it's going to give us the same uh, the same results since the previous srand call. That's why we should just call srand once at the beginning of our program. And now, if we launch this, we're gonna get uh, random random strings every single time. Now, this algorithm is fine to use for your homework or for your personal projects, but if you're using a production environment, it needs to be secure. I don't recommend this at all, simply because it's using the rand function, which is not secure. All right, that's about it for this video. If you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care. Bye.